Hello guys, welcome back to this channel and thanks for viewing this video. Today I'm going to show you how to create a list of text items using the Java GUI class called JList. So a list of text item can be set up in Java so that the user will be able to choose either one item or multiple item. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to create that list of text items. So this is how my project is structured. I have two classes, the main class, which is having the main method. And in that main method, I am creating a frame instance of type my frame. And the class my frame is extending or inheriting from JFrame. And in the constructor here, I have the various attributes of my frame, like the title, the size, you know, the layout manager that I have set to null and uh, set visible. So as I told you, if you want to create a um, list of text items, you have to use the JList class. And this is what you need to write. So I will say JList string. So this is going to be a list of string items. And I'll call it list assignment operator new JList. And then in the bracket, I need to pass a default list model instance. All right. So let me first import JList class. So once I have done that, I need to create a default list model. So I'll say default list model. So this is going to be a string and I'll call this my list assignment operator new default list model and then open the brackets like this semicolon. So we need to import the default list model and then we need to pass the my list instance here. So as usual, if we want to add our list to the frame, we simply say this, that add, and then we'll pass in a list like this. Okay. So because the layout manager is set to null, we need to define the alignment and the size of our uh, list manually. So I'll say list that set bound. And in here, I'll say 100, 100, then 200, 100. And this, if I run, let's see what will happen. We have not added any string item in the list. We will do that in a couple of uh, seconds. But let's just see what will happen when we run our program. So now you can see we are having a space that is reserved for our list. So how do you do if you want to add string items to your list? So we will simply come here and say my list. So this is the instance of the default list model. And I will say that add element. And then I will add an element here. I can say fish. So now when I run my program, so now you can see fish showing in the list area. All right, so I will add a couple of more list items. So here I will say chicken and cow meat. And I can also say sardines. So now let me run. Now you can see all my items showing in the list. Okay, so now let's say that we want to apply the action listener. We want to add a button. And when we add, when we click on the button, we want to output a message on the frame that says that you have selected this, this particular list item. We will declare our button here, J button, BTN, semicolon. And inside the constructor, I will say BTN, new J button. And for the text, I will say, my selection like this and then i can set the bounds for the button i will say btn that set bounds 300 300 100 and 100. i need to add the button to the frame so this that add btn semicolon let me just see if the button has been added all right so this is where the button has been added so I'll say 100 here 200 and this will be 50 let me run all right so or maybe increase the y-axis okay so now i have a button and i have my list item so now we will need to add the action listener so i will say implement action listener import the action listener add on implemented methods so we will add the action listener to the button so btn add, add action listener and i will say this in the action performed method, we will say um, that we want to declare a string and call this MSG. We will instantiate this string to an empty string. Then we will say if 
list that gets selected index is different from minus one, then we want MSG to be updated to you selected and then semicolon right here. I'll say list that get selected value and then semicolon. So now you can see that our list is underlined. Uh, this is because we declared it in the constructor. So we need to make sure to declare the list outside of the constructor so that it's going to be accessible in this class. All right. So I'll simply say like this, J list and then string list. And here I remove, remove it. So now when you come down here, nothing is showing. So as I was telling you, we need to actually output this MSG in our frame. How do we do that? So I'm going to declare a label. So I'll say J label, label, semicolon, import the J label class. Then in the constructor, I will say label, new J label, semicolon. Let me just put label here as an example. I'll set the bounds for this label, label that set bounds. So that will be, um, let's say 100. 50, 200, 50 as well. And what I'm going to do is to add that particular label to the frame. So I'll say this, that add. So let me just run and see that my label is appearing. Okay, now you can see where the label is showing. All right, so now I'm going to set the text of the label down here. I'll say label that set text, and then I'll pass MSG. Let me run. If I select fish, for example, and click on the button, my selection, you can see you selected fish. Okay, so that's it um, on how you can use the list. If you want to output the item of your list, you want your program to actually return the item that you've selected from the list. That's basically it. So let's say, what if we, we had two lists? Okay, instead of list one, we, um, we, we add another list. So I will simply copy this, paste down here, and then I will say list underscore two. Let me first come up here. So I will declare another Java list. I will say J list string list underscore two. And then when I come down here, I will simply change these lines of code. I'll say list underscore, my list underscore two, my list underscore two, my list underscore two, and then my list underscore two. Let me change the text. I'll say shapes, potatoes, rice, and bread. So here I will say list underscore two, and then I will pass in the items of my list underscore two, and then list underscore two. I'll set the bounds. We say 300. I need to add this list to the frame. So I'll say this that add list underscore two. So now let me run. Yeah, so I'm having two lists on my frame here. So you know what? I can actually change the placement of a list. So I will copy for the, the, the alignment of the button, paste it like this. And then I will change the alignment of the button. So that will be 100, 200. So now let me run. This is how it's looking like. If I say 250 here, I will increase this to 100 for list two. And here I have the button. Let me say 300 for the bat, uh, for the list, the first list, uh, 300 or 250. I will also increase the size of the button to fit. Yes, so now this is how it's looking. If I select chicken here, you selected chicken. And uh, what I want to do is I also want to add the action listener on my second list. Uh, I want to, I already added the action listener on button here. So I want to define what will happen if the user selects an item from the second list. And I need to do that in the action performed method. And as for this one, I will say if list underscore two uh, get selected is different from minus one, I need to update the value of the string MSG here and it's going to be a concatenation. I want it to be a concatenation of the first MSG that we got from the value here. And here I will say with, and then semicolon. And after that, I can say for object frame, list underscore two, I get selected values and MSG concatenation frame. And outside I will still update label set text MSG. 
So now let me explain to you what this line means. So here, all we are saying that we are saying that if the object of the second list here, we want our program to return its value and that value we will concatenate it with in the MSJ string method. Okay, so now here the label that said text is not only going to be this that we have added with this, but it's also going to output the value of the item selected from our second list. All right, so now when you can see if I run, let me say I select chicken and here I select potatoes and click on my selection button. Now you can see you selected chicken with potatoes. So I need to increase the label size. Let me say 500 here, run. So I'll say chicken, potatoes. So you selected chicken with potatoes, okay? If I click cow meat, rice, you selected cow meat with rice, sardines, chips, you know. So based on which list item I select in each of these two leagues, my program is going to output a value. So if I only select one item from one of the lists, we'll only return that particular um, list item name. Okay, so if I only select the item from the second list, it returns with bread because of what we have defined here. We said with and then the name of the list item selected. So now let's try to embellish our uh, frame, okay, and its GUI components. We will add some font style and some colors and all of that. All right, so we will start with the first list. Uh, we'll change the font style. So I'll say list that set font, new font. So the font family, I'll say Arial. Font style, I'll say italic. Font size, let me say 20. Let's run and see. Yeah, so this is how it's looking like. What if I change this to plain? Or let me say bold here. And if I say 20, yeah, so this is how it's looking like. I can choose to increase the height to 200. Yeah, that's it. Let me change the Y coordinates of the button. You know, this is it. So after the font style, I need to set some margin. So say set border, new empty border, and then that will be 10, 10, 10, 10. Import the empty border class. Let me increase this. Let me say this to 150. I'll add the same properties to the second list. And I will simply say list underscore two, list underscore two. And I'll increase the height to 150 as well. Let me work on the, um, the alignment of the button. Say 280 for the width of the list. 80 here. Now when I run, I say 27. Yeah, so the size of the button, I say 27 as well. I'll maybe set the font of the button, BTN. Let me set its background color, background color, say blue, and then BTN are for set foreground. This will be white. Yeah, so I will also work on the label. So label, set the font, now when I run, cow meat with bread. Let me bring that down a little bit. We can also add a set foreground for the label. Now we label set foreground red. Now this is it. One other thing we can say BTN that set flexible false. So now when we run. Okay, so we can remove this. By default, when we run, the label will not show. It will show only when we click on the button my selection. So that's, that was it on how you can work with list, how you can create a list of string items and uh, make your program return those list items on your frame. And uh, I hope this video was informative and please don't forget to like, to share and subscribe to this YouTube channel for more videos like this one. Let's meet in the next one.